evening service joined this hangout. <laughs> what are you doing, Chris? <laughs> Wasn't me. <laughs> okay, do you have to be scared now? No. Nice. I was just playing around a little bit. I like if you saw how I approached my photo shoots is is a little bit how I approached my uh, edits. It's sometimes experimentative. Even though I've left a lot of my dramatic edits long gone in the past, I really don't do that many. I stick to a very steady style. Like it's it's very me. Bright colors, nice contrast, and uh, I use dodge and burn to to put the light to where it was. So here's peanut butter, before and after. Mm -hmm. So is that your main tool, the dodge and burn tool? Yeah, I use the brush, and I mm -hmm. have a presets for the brush. One is a darken, and one is a brighten. So. So I'll brighten his face a little bit, but I'm lacking a little bit of contrast on him. Up on the clarity to bring up him as well. And I'm kind of not totally in love with the color, but that was terrible. So that's what the camera thought. Here's what Lightroom thinks. A little more purple. Mm. I'm going to take a little bit of both worlds and adapt it a little bit. It's a little more of a funky color, but every once in a while I'll do something like that. He's showing a lot of teeth, so we are going to spend a moment. I have a preset on the brush for uh, Brighten and, uh, and Desaturate, so that will help teeth. Real quick, I'm not worried about painting inside the lines too terribly. I mean, if he orders a 16 by 20 of himself, then or she orders one of him, then we'll be a little more careful, I guess. There we are. Just right to sharpen. There wasn't too much on that one. That's why hopefully this will go by a little fast. Do we got any uh, news on the Hangout? Any questions? Not so far. Alright. Um, this face is a little dark. It's all about making sure faces aren't too dark. I gotta start thinking about am I gonna put these on the iPad to display tomorrow morning at the photo at the reception? I'm going to start charging my iPad, actually, <laughs> in a moment. So I do notice you're using a rather big brush for the dodging and burning. Yes, exactly. I use a big brush. So aren't you afraid it'll blow out the light of the sky around it? Or? No, I'm a... Uh, I'm, uh, it's kind of one of those gradual things. They won't think that it's edited. Hmm. They won't think that it's edited too much if it's more gradual than if it's just like really directly around them. I have a pretty, I have the flow set up pretty high on that brush and the feather as well. So the, though the brush is pretty big, it's, it's centering just around his face. Gotcha. Yeah. And it saves a lot of time as well, I'm sure. Yes, yes, a lot of time. Sean is asking how big... What's that? Shauna is asking how big Scott. How big is... Well, that's a personal question. Yeah. Just joking. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the, the brush, I mean, I'm just... I'm adapting it quite a bit. Here's... I use a little... The only button on this I really use is the the slider that will make the brush bigger and smaller. But sometimes it takes so long to work with that that I just go over here and, and, and change it automatically right here. Just like, oh, I need to go way big real fast, and then there it is. 
but if it's a small adjustment, I'll use the slider. So uh, there's there's certainly things I can do like with uh, this is a three to one view, so it's really close with noise reduction and stuff like that. But I, I'm not going to do it on on these pictures. I think noise reduction is more for when the picture is actually going to be viewed large, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's when they get like a print or something like that. What I just did really quickly was did a sharpening brush right over the whole entire group. And now I'm going to grab a gradient, which uses the same filter, the same if presets as the brushes. And I'm going to take it and darken the sky, darken the side a little, darken the other side. And then there's still a little I could do. So I'm going to take a large brush. So peanut butter on this one? Sure. We need a different keyboard. Yeah, like how about before and after? Like just. Oh, yeah, to say before. <laughs> Anyways, I might do another little, uh, you can stack these effects, so I'm going to do another little bit of sharpening on the faces. Um, and I'll, I'll zoom in so that we can see that it did have a decent effect wow. on the sharpness of them. This is probably a stupid question, Scott, but how do you do zoom so far in? When I use the Lightroom, I can't get that far in. Uh, up on the navigator on this top corner, you have fit, fill, one, one, and then whatever you was, your last selected will be your fourth option. And you can change which one's a f to the, a different fourth option by clicking the up and down arrow. So anytime there's, a, anytime there's this little up and down arrow, it means that there's some sort of option to pick. And you'll see that when you use the brush. There's an up and down arrow next to effect. It means that there's an option to pick. So whenever there's a plus, there means that there's a preset or something that you can save. Whenever there's a, an arrow like this, a big arrow right here, it means that it's something that you can collapse. And whenever there's a, a little box like this, like it looks like a little white or light switch, it means that there's something you can turn on and off quickly. So those are some of the... Um, I believe that my, my camera was on manual focus and I didn't refocus for this one, so I need to sharpen them. <laughs> Because <laughs> I love the picture. <coughs> I'll try to get away with it. See what we can do. Took me a while to think of what brush I needed. So much lost time. Okay, so I lighten the areas that I want to because I know that my next step is I'm going to use a, a vignette. So I did a preset vignette, which is one of the very few presets that I have. But I'm going to do a manual vignette. You see how dark the vignette is? I really don't want it that dark. But I am continuing to use it because it's just a mask. I can change the level of that mask afterwards. Okay. So, and I can either trash that mask and, uh, and redo it without having so much in the corners, or I'm just going to do another mask and lighten up these corners afterwards. So, it's kind of a decision. What was going to be my fastest option? And I chose that as my option at that time. Instead of undoing and then redoing, I decided to just do another one real quick. I want to do a little bit more above, but I don't want to darken those spires too much. And, uh, yeah. Anyways, it could do for a little bit more contrast. So I'm going to use the point, turner, point curve and go to strong. All right. 
quickly to the next one. So you, you kind of have to let go, I guess, and not be too perfectionistic about it all. Save that for your awesomest pictures, the one that you put on your portfolios or you put on Google Plus <laughs> or that you print or whatever. Uh, pick your battles, right? Right. Uh -huh. Any more questions that they have? Anyone else? Not so far. I should make them say yo if they're listening. Go to my profile and say <laughs> yo. Yo. Does everybody get white teeth all in the groom? Only those that I can see from a distance. Mm -hmm that are outstanding, as in very viewable. Here's the lights that light up the, the temple at night. We're just going to get yeah. rid of them real quick. H to hide them. They, are, they do stand out a little bit. You can still kind of see them. It's not perfect. Mm -hmm. So my thing is... Uh, you kind of use a softened brush a little bit. Uh, still, that one's still kind of showing up too much. So I'm going to move it to pick from a different area. Much better. Lightroom didn't get too right. And we got some faces in there. Uh, I shot this at a pretty low shutter or pretty low f-stop because I wanted um, the background a little bit blurrier because, you know, I chose to have the style I wanted and therefore I have to live with the consequences and um, sharpen them up a little bit. It wasn't too low shutter speed like if it was just the two of them since they were spread apart a little bit more. I just, I did do, I didn't go like down to 1.4, I did 2.5. And it was a little off on uh, my angle. I change the angle there. There's no particular order, just kind of whatever comes to mind. And I really just want to go without that white part, but then might as well go without the black part too. So there we go. Again, no real concern for aspect ratios. Doing my own little uh, vignette and uh, my strategy on that is whatever's the fastest way to get the vignette I want. That's You're not going to center the group either? What's that? You're not going to center the group either? You have a little bit more left than right? doesn't well, matter. It doesn't come to mind yet, but I mean, with you saying it, it comes to mind, and I probably would. But I, I started thinking about doing other things and stopped about the crop. But yes, much better. I don't know. You'll have to ask afterwards. I mean, the moment you said it, I'm like, oh yeah, of course. <laughs> I wonder if I would have done it. Or not. Good, good brownie points, sir. Yeah. Now, there's, there's plenty of things, and I do go over them again afterwards. I believe in kind of just going through them quickly, staying with this kind of fast up-tempo thing, but I don't mind going over them again, kind of and seeing what, what obvious problems still stick out, uh, but not worrying to fix every little thing. Um, yeah. So sometimes I'll do it, sometimes so I will do a re So you would do a re-edit at another time, Scott? So What's was that? I was saying, are you saying that you would do another uh, a re-edit at a later time? I want to re-edit. I would just continue with fixing even other yeah. things. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, just more edit, more more focus on some maybe smaller things, or see what really annoyed me 
later. Like at this moment, maybe it's not annoying me enough to actually spend the time. I'm not going to pick that battle, but maybe I will. And like here they're all star two stars, right? Well, maybe mm -hmm. I go back through. Well, obviously I will go back through and do a, a three stars and four stars, and I'll, I'll find my favorite maybe like 20 pictures. And so, therefore, I'm going to go through those 20 pictures and spend a little extra time on them because they're going to be the very first ones on my catalog and my, sorry, the gallery of the pictures. Sandra just asked a question here. She said, can you see the stream of people watching? They are asking questions but can't tell if you guys can see them or not. I'm not sure what she means, actually. Um, questions of people. Can you see anything in your page, um, Scott? I have to refresh it and uh, let's see here. Wow, yeah, there's a... Uh, Thank you, Sandra. There's, there's a bunch. Any questions? My favorite bend option. Bend option. I'm not sure what that means. If anyone wants to refresh and, and look for a few of them and ask the questions, right. that way I will be able to continue. I think what we were referring to there, Scott, was uh, when you were straightening it up. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, Eyeball on it. And uh, when you're on the straighten thing, it comes up with a lot more grids like that. So I'll, I'll just kind of parallel them to another line of emphasis in the picture. Uh, there's a lot of yo's here. What was yo again? Was this some secret? There was... Oh. No, uh, that was when you want... Gary was asking... Game. Come on, Karen, get uh, with it. Gary was asking, a lot of your adjustments are extreme and then you tone it down afterwards? Is that your editing style? Uh, when I teach people about Lightroom, I say, you need to really do extreme things to get used to it, but for actual, for your learning sake, be extreme. For the picture's sake, don't be too extreme. <laughs> I wouldn't think that I'm very, uh, I don't do a lot of extreme type edits, but I did make that one mistake and then went back and fixed it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what they were talking about. Yeah, probably. Yes. Jesse, stay in the house. How's it going, Jesse? You're muted. Oh, we'll come back to you when you're <laughs> unmuted. <laughs> so one question for me is, I notice you use the tone curve a lot. That's one of the tools I haven't mastered yet. I tend to use contrast and clarity. Mm -hmm. There are, let's see, there's quite a few different ways to, to get to do contrast. Mm -hmm. uh, the contrast slider, mm -hmm. obviously, is one of them. Blacks, mm -hmm. black contrast. Um, and in this tone curve panel, you can, you can mess around with the line or the little regions section or do the point curve thing. Uh, because the point curve is the fastest thing, I'll right. often go to that one first. Mm -hmm. The second, my second most used thing is the lights section in the region. I'll bump up the lights section if I have a, have a picture that I think could be a brighter kind of look. But I have to be careful with that because if it's too bright, then, um, then I have to go back down. Anyways. I'm on now. Oh, Jesse. You can probably hear me now. Mm-hmm. Ken, how's it going? <laughs> Good. How's it going, Scott? Oh, you know, just... Uh, I thought I'd hop uh, in and see what's up. Of course. I really don't like the freeway on the side there, so I've been cropping that in. Where's your hoodie? You're not wearing the hoodie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we haven't hung out since then, huh? <laughs> it's been a while. I think that was the only time I wore a hoodie. <laughs> I should I should like dress up wear a tie for these events right there, very, there you go oh very that would be awesome ah, maybe I should <laughs> focus upwards so you don't see my belly <laughs> do 
Jesse, have you been down here before much? Down uh, Utah Valley? Oh, yeah. At this location? Oh, yeah. I've, I've, I haven't uh, spent much time there, but I've, uh, I've passed. I've passed by. <laughs> Is that San Diego? Yeah. Hey, wait. Mark, where are you yeah, from? I passed by on the freeway. That's my, that's my uh, visit. <laughs> Mark, where do you live? Uh, I live in Los Angeles. Okay. Do you ever get down to San Diego? Uh, I have been in the past, but not lately. Yeah. So I love that temple, though. That, that's a gorgeous place. It was a very uh, difficult place to shoot a lot of the time, but the, the clouds rolled in just in time, just right at the time that they started. Pretty sunny, is that, is that why? It's always so bright, and that, that building is just pure white, it's just, uh, you have to like wear sunglasses just to walk around. Yeah, I've been to the LA temple there, I haven't, I haven't been by uh, San Diego before. And uh, it, is, it is sunny in San Diego a lot, so, I can't think of what to do, well, at least I'll do that. How'd you get the on air? I can't get on air yet. <laughs> You're not special. Sorry. I'm not. <laughs> Jesse, Jesse here wrote a. Jesse, you you Jesse is the author of. Is it out? Yeah, Google. Google Plus Yeah. Yeah, it's it's out. Well, that's too bad. Maybe I don't know. I heard that uh, Google was just giving out very few first spots for those. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. right now it's just testing with a number of users who are doing a lot of hangouts and have mm -hmm. a lot of people like to view them. That if you feel that you are one of those, send me a message afterwards. I I'll I'll do that. Okay. I'll do that, Chris. Uh, you can apply to you can apply to Google to get them. Uh yeah, I just came home from a photo shoot. I went to a bridal show and did pictures of the fashion part for a dress designer. I figure I'm going to keep on doing uh, give, doing favors for this dress designer enough that when you know I get married that I can get a free dress out of it for my not for me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, as a nice gift for that future someone. Well, otherwise, you could yeah. always do a trash to dress shoes. <laughs> yeah, her her dresses are like all handmade. It's mm. pretty, pretty intense. I don't know how she feels about the whole trash mm -hmm. to dress thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, when's the next uh, photo walk here, Scott? Well, I'm doing a a big. Oh, I should talk to you about this. I'm doing a big event in in, uh, in March. Yeah? Yeah, uh, here in Utah, in fact, and people from all around are coming. Chris is coming, right? Absolutely. Wouldn't miss that for the world. That sounds freaking awesome. Nice. <laughs> up, Chris and, and uh, Thomas Hawk and Colby and Lotus and, and a bunch yeah, of other yeah. people, Ricardo and that. Yeah. Give me details. I'm there. Uh, well, for the first part of the week, and not everyone's coming for the first part, uh, there is a uh, photo decathlon. You know, I'll just talk about this, and you guys can keep watching me uh, do my little thing. So the, the photo decathlon is a series of basically either as an individual competitor or in a team, a small team, you compete in ten different categories. So portrait, landscape, street photography, architecture, commercial, and uh, you have two and a half days to go and take a bunch of pictures and all ten of these themes, and we'll have a bunch of really good uh, judges all voted in the on Google Plus, in fact. Uh, Scott, can I just ask a question about that last image? Yes. Uh, you had um, 
It was a it was a question about posing. You had a a larger lady at the front uh, left as well, looking at it. Yeah, I, it would be better for her to not be on the on the side or in front. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you you've got you've got somebody that seems to be uh, blocked off on the right hand side. I'm not 100 percent certain, but it looks like there's two people there. Yeah. They were into just lifting him up, so... Yes, yeah, but I don't believe these are actually stage... Uh, they're, I don't think they're called stage. These are more like spontaneously staged things, so I don't think people yeah. are very picky about that. Yeah, I don't think right. that they're... I mean... Uh, no, I mean, I, I, well, I was just thinking from a, you know... Uh, it, it would have created maybe a, a better image if... Oh yeah, for sure. It would have been better. Uh, but for time's sake, trying to phrase it, trying to phrase so delicately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> and cropped up feet would have been better too, not to have those either. So it's kind of the same thing. So. Yeah, exactly. But it's still a fun shot. I think. Yeah, I would still keep it. Because it's just funny. These are the awesome. memories that, that the bride, I think, will appreciate more than those staged ones where everybody stands stiff. And that's really important to consider. I think that's sometimes forgotten. Yeah. No, I wasn't thinking about uh, sort of staging it as such. Just make a, you know, maybe make a couple of adjustments while they were Cut her out. Before they took... <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, before they started so lifting cruel. him up. Just before, before they lifted him up. Before they lifted him up, yeah. Just um, like oh, I should say, mention a couple of my generic when they get on import. Like, on import, what I do is I like fill light a lot. So my, I always have a lot of fill light on my picture. I go up on my contrast on import. So fill light contrast, and down here on the profiles under camera calibration, since I'm using a Nikon, I can use the profile camera vivid. And by, by example, here is, here is uh, the ACR profile. Oh, wow. So it looks a lot different, right? Mm -hmm. It's wow. the way that uh, Lightroom tries to mimic how, the, how it looked in the camera before it was, you know, while it was a JPEG in the camera. And then when it came to my computer as a RAW, you know, it looks totally different. The colors aren't really rendered and the contrast really isn't there so much. The saturation isn't too much there. So, um, How often do you use that, Scott? It's on every picture. It's imported with a lot of fill light, a bit more contrast, and on camera vivid because that's my look, is a camera vivid type look with those types of bright colors. So yeah. Yeah, just just from the chat, Sandra Parlow says that you want to wear your own wedding dress. Huh, huh. <laughs> Who's the Sandra pa I don't know who this who this is. Yeah. Like some Canadian. <laughs> I wonder if there's much of a delay. On the hangouts on air. There's a four or five second delay, I think. Second delay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, in a perfect you world, ever I would uh, fix the nose or whatever. Or what? But like, like I'm really only going to do that <laughs> if they order like a by twenty or something. Do you ever touch up the whites of the eyes, Scott? Uh, not something I really ever do on this first go through. And I, I find that it's really it difficult to do and still keep it real looking. Mm. That's one of the more difficult. So what's what's if, if you were to recommend one book on on learning Lightroom, what would you recommend, Scott? Uh, Lightroom with Scott Jarvie. Yeah. 
<laughs> I, I, one you wrote? <laughs> well, I started Lightroom before there was even books out, you know? <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I started when they had the beta and before there was any books. So I don't know, but I've always... When I first started and I was learning a little bit of Photoshop, I really liked Scott Kelby's approach on uh, on teaching through his books because he seemed a lot more personable in his books. Interesting. Yeah, I've been I've been trying to I've been trying to hone my skills recently. So follow you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I got this today, so I might be doing this a little bit more. Yeah. But I just do the same thing. So you see, I did this mask on the teeth, but it was set to soften skin. I forgot to change it to the right. Oh, that's why. Okay. Thing. So I can just change it later. And I can't go too white, or people will just go, oh, he <laughs> that to his teeth. So I'm just doing a little bit. It's it's natural. <laughs> more, a little more. Not perfectly pearly white. Yeah. You'll crop it to the center? Yeah, I'm sure I will. I'm going to get the colors and everything right. Again, it's my flow, the, what I do first is definitely there is none. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Whatever comes to my mind first is what I'll do first. I think it's her German nature that makes her go, it has to be centered. Uh, low CD, I'm sorry. Like, I can't do anything. I'm a graphic designer, and if it's not centered, if it's not the right ratio, I get, like, mad. Oh, what a funny show. <coughs> oh, CD. She was putting on lipstick, so he did. Mm -hmm. And we're not seeing hers because I think hers got, like, a one star instead of two stars. Mm -hmm. His was a lot more. <laughs> This is a lot funnier. Yeah. So you'll you'll tend to see that if they're if they're larger in the picture, I'm more apt to do the teeth whitening. So. Strong contrast. Um, I can go up on the fill light to make her a little bit brighter, but instead I'm going to. Um, just do a big brush right there in the middle. There we go. Does Sandra have any other uh, cute little remarks that she's made? Oh, but she was just complaining because you said you didn't know her. But she was kidding, so she knows you were kidding. Oh, but I would no. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> the wrath of Sandra. <laughs> so comes right on her Canadian moose down here and <laughs> oh, oh. with awesome. her hockey stick. She might do it. Be careful. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm pretty uh, happy with how fast my computer's going, even though I'm running a Hangouts. She says she loves you, by the way. Oh. <laughs> oh. It seems they've improved the speed a bit recently. Uh, I'm, I'm not having as many issues as I used to. On it slowing down your computer? Yeah, I'm on a MacBook Air, so it, it often slows down my computer, but uh, not having many issues this time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll find out how long it takes me to edit 100 pictures. Well, we kind of keep you, keep interrupting you there, so you can't really... But I'm still editing while doing it. Uh, yeah, it's only when I ask him to go back four pictures and tell me something <coughs> about that. Do you want to take off a little bit more of the, of the top here? No. I know that would put them a little bit more on the thirds, but I just it's not that important to me right now. I guess I could. <laughs> no, 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 don't. 
Uh, like seriously, it's just. I do a lot with crop. I do a, like a lot with crop. I go even to close ups, although it maybe wasn't intended to be. Because afterwards, I realize I crop a lot, and that's one of my most important tools. I just love how things change after you crop it a little bit. Yeah, I've stopped cropping all that much. Yeah. I'm exactly done. the same cow and I crop really heavily. Yeah, but poorly, like this is unfortunately something that shows that I'm a bad photographer when I don't really do the framing when I take the picture. I do the framing afterwards, which is kind of stupid, but that's just how it rolls. So. Yeah, I've made a commitment to edit each picture that I give to the clients, so... Because somebody says that there's a big echo, but I don't know whose echo. I'm not hearing it, but... Uh, yeah, me neither, so maybe it's me. Uh, no, there was an echo earlier, but it's gone now, so... Okay. I don't know. She doesn't look very happy in that picture. <laughs> it's very fun. So, so Scott, a while back you blackened out everything but the picture in, in the middle. How do you do L. that? I've been trying to figure that out. L. L. Okay. I've L been trying to figure that out so I could just focus on the picture. It's really good for when you're uh, for when you're cropping so that you can. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know. It gets rid of all the other crops, so you're just focusing and looking at the picture. Yeah, we'll see it next time. I I do it. We'll focus on that. Actually, we'll do it right here. So one is it's somewhat right. blacked out, and then two L's, it's all blacked out. I used it all the time. Oh, that's great. I've been trying to figure that out. So easier. And a third L, it's back to normal. So they had a nativity out here. Can't really get rid of that or anything. Ah. Let's see here. What are these, uh, just curiosity, these little blue specks on the bottom uh, left? You'll have to unmute yourself to ask the question. Sorry, I didn't know I was muted. The uh, the group of people on the bottom left hand corner is that people or the nativity scene? The nativity scene. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I just can't fathom palm trees and nativity scene. It's kind of like true Christmas time. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I was kind of thinking the same thing. I'm actually going to crop them out. I tried to get really low to the ground so that they wouldn't be in there and kind of over the hill, but I really wanted to be in this location, so kind of had to do what I had to do. So someone had a question, how much equipment do you take with you for a wedding and how many assistants? Uh, if, if it's like during the summer I tend to have a few interns and stuff like that so I'll have them with me maybe if it's local and that could be two to you know anywhere from one to three uh, recently I have been not using anyone so no assistants and I just if I'm doing flash and stuff like that, I'll just make like the mother or the bridesmaid mm -hmm. hold something. Um, and here we didn't have a lot of time. We we just needed to do a few more pictures pretty quickly. It was cloudy, so I felt like I would just go without any equi anything, and I'm just shooting. No reflectors, no flash. I mean, obviously they would, if you got it all out, set it all up, you know, the picture, you can always improve upon the picture. But, um, you know, had to be 
take a few shots and be on our way. So I just shot with basically just two lenses a lot. But I had all my stuff with me just in case. So I have a, uh, a roller bag. Actually, you can see it. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be difficult. Let's see if I can't so get So you two lenses being, sorry for not knowing that, but you two lenses being... Uh, I've been using, recently for portraits, I've been using the 85 and the 24 a lot. 85. Okay. They're both 1.4 lenses. 1.4, okay. I and I think I use them a lot because they're my newest ones. <laughs> okay. Who knows. And, um... See, I'm just going to get that piece of black. So do you have two camera bodies with the two lenses attached, or you just... Well, I have two camera bodies mainly because just in case one goes out. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm usually just going to use my better camera for most of the shots. Except for there's a point like, you know, when you're walking down the aisle for lots of different types of weddings? Well, in LDS weddings like this, they have it when they come out of the temple. It's like that one big moment that lots of things happen. So at that point in time, I usually have two two lenses out or two cameras out to have two lenses, so I don't have to spend that time okay. switching lenses. But then you do the group pictures, and you're not really it's not like a super super duper fast thing that you have to be ready at a moment's notice. And then when you're shooting the bride and groom like this, I have time to to change lenses. So um, I. I Really, those are the only times uh, walking down the aisle or or at a sporting event or or uh, like here when they come out of the temple. There's just certain situations where I would use two two cameras for that, not having to spend the time to change <laughs> lenses. But most of this shoot, just one camera. They're mm -hmm. all pretty much taken on one camera. Which really helped later on for the reception, which is coming up. It was inside a house, and it was dark. Pretty dark inside the house. So um, it helped that I had the 1.4 lenses, really low-light lenses. In this situation, it's not about the light, it's about the style to have it all kind of blurry in the background. At, F, at 24 millimeters, it'll still be somewhat blurry in the background. It's pretty cool. It almost looks fake in the back. It's just unreal. A friend of mine, actually, he he's a video a filmmaker and... He does uh, photography as well. I did his wedding years ago, like five years ago. He looked at one of these pictures, and he's like, what did you shoot that with? Actually, because I was back a week later. No, ten days, late, ten days after this wedding, I had already gone back to Utah, over to Oregon, and then drove all the way back down to San Diego to do another one at the same location. Oh, wow. I'll have to edit that one next week. Another hangout. But this one, like I was saying I don't know, earlier, uh, they have a reception tomorrow at a roller skate rink, a little open house for their friends in Utah. So I just want to get these done pretty quickly. That's cool. The roller skate rink. <laughs> and Jesse, my, my sister did, did her reception at, uh, at the, the Boston Aquarium. Oh yeah, they, they ran out the aquarium and uh, had all the penguins and everything all there. That's kind of awesome. What? No way. <laughs> yeah. Wait, the penguins were out and about. Yeah. Well, they were they were in their ha in their habitat in the oh, aquarium. Okay. But uh, they were walking around in the reception area with their butler uh, suits on and serving. That would have been cool. <laughs> okay, Gary. Um, Gary Munro has a question. Was there scouting for where to pose them, or just go and just run and gun? Sorry. Uh, 
Usually I do the walk around and see what inspires me. But I've shot here before. In fact, this was the third wedding I did in the same this at the same building uh, this year. So so I knew kind of where, and it's actually kind of limited amount of locations for this this place. It doesn't have a really large landscape area, and there's not a lot under the shade or anything. So, and does that make it easier for you because you know yeah, that one's up pretty thing? high? Are you worried that they're going to look the same? Uh, I've done I've done another location. Probably the, the, there's a a temple here in Salt Lake. It's pretty famous, and and uh, I've probably done 30 weddings there. <laughs> and uh, I'm guessing at least that many. And I don't really worry about it too much there. So yeah, makes sense. Maybe I should worry about it. I just don't think about <laughs> those types of things. I think I think at that one everyone's expecting the same types of shots. <laughs> yeah, they're like, I want the one here, and I want the one here. <laughs> with so many people getting married there, you just kind of develop this kind of culture around it. Mm -hmm. okay. That's where my wife and I were married. This is one's gonna frustrate you because I'm leaving it like this, no straightening. <laughs> Why wouldn't I straighten it? So has the bride or groom ever asked you for the Jarvie window? <laughs> yes, yes, I do it ah, at every wedding. Yeah, I can't straighten this one because then I'll start missing a lot of her dress and a lot that's, of him. That's what I was just looking at. I was actually holding a piece of paper to the screen to see <laughs> if it would do. <laughs> but I can go in a little bit here, but it's like I can't quite get it straight, so I'm just going to have to cut part of him. This is one of those where you're laying on the ground, uh, so close to the ground that you really can't tell if you that you were out of that it was not even. Hmm. Keith Conley would like to know if you could estimate how many hours do you spend after a photo shoot? Yeah, that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna <laughs> find out. <laughs> On another I guess hangout, you have to stay awake. <laughs> a few months ago I did another hangout of the whole entire wedding from selecting, you know, to rating, mm -hmm. to doing everything, even to, to the very bitter wow. end. And I, I think it took me, it was a nine-hour hangout. And I still think I had about two hours left after that. So, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's almost like 11, 11 hours if it's a full wedding, a large amount of pictures. This one will be a little quicker. It's not a, quite as difficult lighting. Oh, but the reception does have some. But that one was 1900 uh, images. Yeah, was wasn't it? So. Fewer, a few less pictures. Um, but that was also hanging out as well. I'm not tired, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me yawn. I don't look as cute as you if I yawn. Ha, I looked cute yawning. Right. We should ask Sandra if she can bring some coffee for Scott. Sandra, right here on your moose, bring me my <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> oh, I love this picture. Thanks. And therefore, I'm going to spend more time on it. That's exactly how it goes. If I this one would probably get the. Yeah, I think this one, this one right here is the centerpiece. <coughs> or that one. <laughs> mm. the other one. I like the last one better. Or the other one, yeah. Yeah. But these are these are fun to have, like as a little triptych or diptych. Mm -hmm. of events. Next week, I'm I'm uh, I'm gonna start doing uh, InDesign edits. I'm gonna start. I'm teaching myself some InDesign, and I'm gonna start making books and stuff. Oh wow! Well, ask cool. me any question you want. 
albums for these <laughs> clients. Yeah. Very cool. I actually own InDesign now. Look. Oh, good. 5.5 or 5? 5.5. Wow. And I have... I actually own Photoshop, too. Look. <laughs> I have CS5. Is there a 5.5? There is a 5.5 now, yes. Oh, sad. I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it either, so don't worry. I'm still working on five, and it's great. But uh, their Adobe has a part of their offices. They have some offices here, and I have a friend that works there. So I got the Christmas special. So I presume you really do all of your editing in Lightroom and not so much in Photoshop by the sound of it? By the sound of me not actually having Photoshop. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, they, they have an outlet store at the Adobe uh, campus. Is that what I just heard? Or you just have friends there? I just had a friend there, and oh, okay, I, I, I missed. I don't need, did I work there? But I don't need Photoshop, but I can buy it. Yeah, that's a great idea. I never thought of that. Yeah, I'm sure I've got a lot of friends that work there. I'm sure you have lots of friends that work there. <laughs> hey, Gary has another hey, Jordan, question. Do you have any... I was just going to ask it. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> now you're right. Hey, so do you it have any said... problem with? Wait, you guys. It says that my uh, Google Talk plugin is unresponsive. <laughs> it looks like it's working from here. So I should just leave it alone. Yeah. I can't see you guys anymore. Oh, touch it. <laughs> it's gonna like break if I hit the button. <laughs> Does that mean that I that I don't get to save it because it broke? Google Talk is your little chat window. I think it has nothing to do with the. The Google Talk plugin is also the thing that powers Hangouts, but oh really? <laughs> given that we're hanging out and we can see him, I'm kind of guessing that it's working okay. Not I can't. You guys aren't moving for me anymore, so. Ah. So maybe that's the thing that broke. We can see you that. Yeah. Um, but so I should just hit no on it or just not touch it? Would you like to see I wouldn't it? touch it. <laughs> I just click no when that comes up. So, uh, I do oh, whatever yeah. Chris tells you. That, that question in the chat was, um, do you have any problems with family shooters? Uh, keeping the subjects focused on your camera, etc. Oh, okay, now I understand the question. The subjects focused, I was like, focusing my camera? <laughs> they meant uh, attention. Uh, and, um, uh, no, I don't think I do. The one thing I'd, I'd love in your use of uh, of photography is in the editing you do is the highlights. You're really good at getting the highlights mm -hmm. in just the right places. What do you mean by that? Well, I, just what you're doing now with with the pen. I, I mean, just figuring out where where to bring out the subject and where uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, where to uh, where to darken the edges, where to darken around them. I, exactly what you're doing right now. The burning and dodging, yeah. That's the word, burning and dodging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, yeah, make sure that my I don't have too many overblown highlights. <laughs> <laughs> burning uh, and dodging, that's what I'm talking about. Bringing out the subject, yeah. Yeah. I think that is important. Well, thank you. Okay, they all want you to click that little message, by the way. <laughs> Why, is that working for them? No.